everybody, this is Michelle with Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations. Today we're going to do the tutorial on how I made the pages for this book. Um, I did do a walkthrough and talked about everything and in that walkthrough I'll put a link below if you haven't seen it. Um, but this is using Attic Antiques. This is a paper collection by Country Craft Creations that's super cute and made a really fun album. This is a di little different album in that I'm using these tab dies that I did purchase at Country Craft Creations in the brick and mortar store when I was there in May for the retreat. Um, these are great little dies and they make great little binding pieces for um, a book such as this. I use the one that has the rounded tops, but they have one that's like a ticket top and then they have one here that's like a scallop edge top and then they have some single ones in those same designs as well um, these make great binding um, pieces for albums and then the single ones I used one just recently to create little tab pieces for a banner that I made so and then they also come with whole reinforcement pieces that are in hearts and circles so um, you can see I, I need to put these in a better um, storage situation here but um, this is by Scrap Diva Designs. This was available in store only at Country Craft Creations, but if you need to get it online, um, you can go to scrapdivadesigns.com and get that. Um, I also used the Elizabeth Craft Designs Curved po Library Pocket in this design when I did show that. So I used just the, um, just the library pocket piece, but you get all of these pieces um, with that particular die set, but I just used the library pocket piece. And I'll show you that in just a second. Um, my stash, these are about one inch binder rings that I used, and I used three of them. Um, if you make more than five pages, you can use bigger rings, so that's super easy to, to do. Uh, the other thing that I did use with this was the Graphic 45 large tags, and the large tags are quite tall. They're like eight and some odd inches, I forget, but what I ended up doing was I scored them at two and a half inches at the bottom and folded it up and then just glued the sides together to create the pocket. And then I put a photo mat on the back of that. So once you do that, the tag is five and a half inches tall and the mat that I used to cover the outside is three and five eighths by five and three eighths, okay? Um, I did use some library cards from my stash. So um, I don't know where you can buy these. I think I found these at the Goodwill um, a while ago, um, but they made a perfect little piece for this since this is a, um, you know, antique -y, um, kind of paper collection. I thought the library cards fit really perfectly, um, but these measure if you wanna just cut your own three by five. So you could also use like an index card. You could cut a photo mat. You can do whatever you want um, in here, but I use the library cards. So um, I think if you look on, on Pinterest or online, you could probably find some that are free to use, you know, downloading or whatever. Um, but that's, I, I did buy these um, at the Goodwill. So <laughs> I thought they were perfect for um, this project. Uh, so that's how I made the pockets. Um, this book has five pages five top loading pockets and then um, real quickly I'll go through here we've got this fun little booklet here and it flips open so um, the pages are all constructed the same as just what I put on them that make them um, each different okay so this one opens up and this has a fun little kind of uh, three-way uh, photo thing um, that you can do and then it flops open like this. I like this because when I, the way that I did it you can have this tied but still have the flip. You don't have to untie it to get that. So you, d you do have to of course untie it to get the interaction but um, there's that. Here's where I use the library pockets and um, again I used more library cards and I just glued them on the two sides and then I created a photo mat so I cut the cardstock at six by four and then the papers were three and seven eighths tall by five and seven eighths wide. So I used the uh, pattern paper on the front and then I used natural artisan cardstock on the back. I also used chocolate, or excuse me, not chocolate, coffee, brown felt artisan cardstock, which is new to the store. And then I used the black artisan cardstock um, with this as well. On the back of this, we're going to make a um, waterfall. And this is one of my stacked waterfalls. These have four by four pages, so you're gonna be able to get a lot of 
um, picture opportunities in here. And then you also have a photo mat here and then that acts as the closure um, for this piece. So um, this one you do have to untie to get the interaction. This is like the only one I think that you have to do that with. Another library pocket. So the fronts of the pages are pretty much the same. Library pocket, photo mat. And then um, the back of this one here, we're going to create a piece that just flips out like that. And it gives you opportunities for photos here. And then um, on this page here, there's just a single flip that I did and I used the cut aparts to decorate it, but I did it so that you could tuck a picture in behind. And then on the back of this, another one of those flip pages, but this one's different in that it's a stacked booklet. So it just opens up like a nice little booklet and has that beautiful picture um, opportunity behind it. And let's see, I know I'm going very quick. I think this will be a fun tutorial. It'll be pretty easy to do. Another library pocket here and then another photo mat. And then on the back, um, I just left it plain. There is no flap, obviously. So I just cut this off of the back page just to make a flat um, back page. So let me show you how to put the pages together. They're all the, made the same. And then we'll go through the interactions and we'll do that. Okay, so let me put that off to the side. First thing you're going to need for your pages is an eight and a half by 11. You'll need five of these total. And as I'm doing this tutorial, I'm gonna use the same piece of paper and then I've kind of color coded all of the pieces. So we'll go through everything and um, you'll be able to put this together and then you can you know, do it in any combination you want. Um, so we're gonna put the eight and a half in here. Actually, we're gonna start at the 11. Let's start at the 11. It makes it a lot easier um, to do that. So you're gonna put it on the 11 and you're going to score at five and a half, okay? So five and a half, and then turn it to the eight and a half. And then here is where we're gonna do a couple of little fiddly things. So we're going to, on the eight and a half, we're gonna score at seven inches all the way down, okay? And then you're going to score at seven and a half, but you're only going to score down to the score line that we did at the five and a half mark. So you're only gonna go halfway down the page. And what this is going to do is this is going to be your, whoops, my book is going to fall on me. This is going to end up being your page front. This will fold to the back and be your page back. This will be the flap that we're gonna add things to. And then this little half inch thing that we just did will be what attaches the pocket along with our tab piece, okay? And we'll just cut this piece out. So again, to make each page, every single page is made the same. Start with your 11 at the top, score at five and a half. Turn it to the eight and a half. You're going to score all the way down at seven. And you're gonna score at seven and a half, but you're only gonna to go to that score mark that's right in the middle of your page. That's why I wanted you to do that one first. It gives you kind of a stop mark, okay? So once you get your page done, you will need to have your tab piece here. And when you die cut this, it makes a really pretty stitch pattern on it and it has some kind of score lines on it. Um, you're just gonna fold this guy in half like so, make sure all your little holes are lined up. And this makes a nice, sturdy um, binding piece, okay? So you'll have a piece that will look like that. And then you're just gonna take your glue and you're gonna just glue it together, okay? So I'm just doing some glue and I'm just gonna glue that together. Let me grab a wipe, because I didn't do that. Of course, I never do that till I'm actually filming, right? <laughs> I never, 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 never get my little wipey out. Okay, so we're just going to glue that together and that's going to make a nice double thickness um, binding piece, okay? And I got glue all over me. Okay, so we got that piece ready. We've got this scored. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut straight up this score line and I'm going like to the left side of that score. I want to, I want to kind of make sure that score line gets kind of cut out and we're going to go straight up to that seven inch score line. Okay. And then I'm going to come back. I'm going to create a tab at that half inch and then I'm going to cut this piece out and then miter that half inch piece. Okay. So you should have a piece that looks like this. 
and then we're going to fold up and make sure everything's nice and lined up. I'm using um, scrap paper from my stash to make this. And again, I was trying to do it color coded so you can see the different pieces as we're putting them together. Okay. And then your, your, what this is going to do is the flap goes to the inside and goes like that. And then this half inch or one and a half inch piece here flips to the back. Okay. So when you get this put together, front page, you turn the page, this is the back, and then here's that flap that we're going to add the attachments to, okay? So then the next thing we need to do is we need to go in and I'm going to mark on the back here at three-eighths of an inch. I'm going to try and find my center line. So let's see, this is actually, and you don't really need to mark it if you don't want to, you can just use your ruler, but if you mark it here at three eighths of an inch right here, um, this is where your piece is gonna go, okay? And what that'll do if you mark it is kind of give you a nice place to kind of line that up so you can center your piece, okay? The page is five and a half, and this is the inside, so this will end up being the inside of the top pocket. So the center mark here will be two and three quarters from top and bottom, and I've got that three eighths inch mark right here, so I know where my center point is. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue here, and I'm gonna center this guy down and make sure I got it in the center. So it's about one and three sixteenths of an inch, which is super helpful, right? <laughs> um, but that centers that, and that's how I put the binding piece on, okay? So now what you have is when you close this up, we'll glue up this side and that'll close that side of the pocket. We're gonna glue this tab here, that'll close that side of the pocket. You'll end up with your top pocket, okay? And that's how you make the page. It's really easy um, to do, okay? And then I'm gonna put glue here. And we're gonna just close that up. And that is how I made the pages and that's it. So um, I made, the five pages just like this and then um, for the page that's going to end up being your very last page all I did was just cut this piece completely off okay um, but for the other pages we're going to keep it and then I used my corner rounder and I just rounded the corners okay and that is that's it so you have your binding piece here and if you do it, line it up at three eighths of an inch, then you have a pretty equal amount on either side of the hole. So that's how I um, kind of did that. And then this will also create your top pocket. And this is where your graphic 45 tag goes in, okay? So that is the basic page, okay? So now let's talk interactions here. Um, the um, first one here is this fun little flip. So you need to have some seam binding and you will need a couple pieces of paper. So we're gonna use a piece of cardstock here. That is, let me double check and make sure that I've got the right um, um, directions. So this brown mat here is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then you're going to need a piece that is um, eight by eight. So let's grab that. And you will need some seam binding and I, I don't have any, I didn't cut any. Um, to show you, but what you will do is you will put it, you'll, well, I'll show you in a second, but you're going to put it in between this four and a quarter inch piece of brown cardstock. You're going to put it between that and your, your page interaction piece that we're going to make. And then that will wrap around the book so you can see how it's behind the book on top of here it doesn't show on this side and then that wraps around and then you can close that book but then still have the page that opens okay so you will want to put pattern paper on your flaps okay um, and take care of that first that's the first thing you're going to want to do and then let's make the page so I have my four and a quarter by four and a quarter here and then I have my eight by eight and you're going to simply just score at four 
and then turn it and score at four. So you will have four sections that are four by four. That will make this little book. And then what we're gonna do is take our scissors and on only one of these score lines, we're just gonna cut that out. So I'm just cutting just a wee little sliver out, just cutting that score line out. Okay, and then you can fold your paper. And then that little piece you can nip off. Really super easy by doing that. So you can see you just cut out that score. Okay, so then let's open this back up. So what you're gonna end up doing is we're gonna fold this kind of accordion style. So we're gonna start, we're gonna have this flap on this side. You're gonna fold over like that and then you're going to fold down. That is literally it. So it will open like this, and then you can also open it again like this, okay? When I showed you in the video, and at the beginning of this one, you open it, you can open it like this, you can open it like this, and then you can open it like this, okay? That is basically all I did. So I just kind of did a maze book, basically, out of this thing. So then what you'll do is after you have your pattern paper on your flap, um, I glued this here, okay, on the inside of the flap. I glued that down and then I did put a photo mat on here. And then I'm just going to kind of turn that. Um, then you'll put your seam binding up here and up here. Um, let me see. Oh. Look at this, I have some seam binding, so we'll pretend, okay, we'll pretend. Um, so you'll put a piece of seam binding, and I did it off to the side a little bit. Um, you can put it in the middle, whatever you want. And then this book goes right on top, and you should have a little border. I did that on purpose, so you have the little border here, and that's how that glues on, and then these just tie around the front, okay? So that is how I made this page right here and again it'll open like this you can also open it like this and it opens like that but if you if you kind of open it up you can kind of see how that looks when we cut it and then I just folded it and then did that and that's all I did and it made a cute little interaction with that so then I just tied it off to the side a little bit you can tie it in the middle like I said however you want to do it you could even do it around um, this way instead of up and down um, however you want but that's how I did that flip and that's how that flip can have the interaction and still open up and then I just used a four by four piece of natural cardstock for the photo mat on there um, so that's that let's save that piece and that piece for later I'll put this off to the side. And then um, the library pocket, let's talk about that. So I just used the die and um, it cuts it out really nice and I, I didn't score it properly, so ignore that piece. But anyways, it just folds up and it goes like that. And I did, be, when I, you know, cause I knew I was gonna put a mat behind it. When I glued these down, I did put tape over the edges so that it smoothed them out a little bit. So let's, um, for example, um, I glued those down. Let's say I did that already. And then I just put tape over the tabs so that when you slide the mat in behind it, that smooths out that spot and they don't hook up on the, on the tab there. Okay. So I did that. And then I just glued that down here on two sides to create the space for the big photo mat. Okay, um, and that's all I did with that. So I did do this. The library pocket itself is four and a quarter tall and it is about three and a quarter wide. So it fits a three by five library pocket really, or a library card really nicely. Um, and then the, the pocket itself is three and a quarter. So this piece right here was three and a quarter by three and a quarter. The total height is four and a quarter, okay, by three and a quarter. So that's how I did that. And I'll put that back in here, I hope that makes sense. And again, each page does have um, a graphic 45 tag and I just took the two and a half inches, this is the tall tag, and I took the two and a half inches, I scored it, folded it up, glued it on two sides and created a pocket. And then I just put a little piece of pattern paper up top and then down below to create that. 
And then um, the back, I used a photo mat, and I did that at three and five eighths by, oh, uh, what did I do here? About five and three eighths, okay? And there's a nice photo mat there. So that is what goes in the top of every single pocket. So you will need to make five of those, or if you, if you want to, you don't have to. I don't want to boss you. <laughs> All right, so here's the waterfall page. This one's a fun page to do. Um, so let's get started with that. Uh, you need a couple pieces here. Let me get my notes together here. Waterfall page, you will need um, one piece, which is the closure piece that is eight by four. And then for the waterfalls themselves, you will need three pieces. They're all four inches tall. You need one that's eight and a half, nine and a half, and ten and a half tall. Okay? Or ten and a half wide, I should say. So one each that are that is four by ten and a half, four by nine and a half, and then four by eight and a half. Okay. So the the four by eight piece, which is different, we're gonna grab our scoreboard. Um, we're just going to take, and basically they're all scored the same. This one's going to be scored at four, and this is going to create the closure around the tab. Okay, so you're just going to fold that like so. Put that off to the side for a second. And then each of your waterfall pieces, you're going to put the long side at the top, and you're going to score at four, turn, score at four. Okay, and that will give you your pages... And then it'll also give you these spines, and I'll show you how to put these together. So four, and turn it, and score it four. And you'll notice that each time you score, the pieces in between get smaller and smaller, okay? And we want it that way, that's what you want. So then we will fold and burnish our pieces for our waterfall here, like so. Okay, looks like I cut that one just a wee bit crooked, so I'm just gonna trim that up. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to take your, I'm gonna use a half inch spacer. The waterfalls have a half inch gusset. So I'm gonna take the longest piece that I have. I'm gonna put my spacer in, on the inside of it and it's gonna butt right up to that score. If you've seen this before, you can fast forward. If you haven't, this is my stacked waterfall technique. I absolutely love it and I use it all the time and I really get nice waterfalls and I only have to put a couple pieces together rather than a zillion of them and it tends to work out pretty darn good every single time and I just love it so if you're not familiar I will link a video to a full tutorial on just how to do the waterfalls um, but each one you have this spine that we created with all the page pieces and you just put glue and I'm using my spacer again it's a half inch spacer I did get from Country Craft Creations and they're amazing and they're made exclusively for Country Craft Creations. They work great. And they come in a set of three different sizes. So you're gonna love them. So once you get those folded together, you end up having kind of like this little stacked piece and when you fold it, ta-da, you have a waterfall. And it works out amazing. Um, so that's that. So then when you grab your next page, this will go on the page. So you're going to have your pattern paper on first, the closure piece here. What you're going to do is you're going to open that up. You're just going to glue it to both sides of your, um, tab here so that when you open it, you'll have that. The seam binding on this piece will go right here underneath the pattern paper. Okay. So then you'll do that, and then you will have your waterfall and pattern paper on, and you're just going to center that on your page. Um, you will want to put your seam binding on the back of your spine. You see that spine there? That's what glues down. Seam binding there, and you'll just put glue on that spine piece, 
and glue that down. So then when you get all of that done, I know this is a quick and dirty tutorial, um, but I hope it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, please, you know, ask me. <laughs> I will, um, I will answer any questions. So the seam binding will be behind your waterfall. It will be here. That's where it ties. And then this will open up. You can have a photo mat back here and then, um, your waterfall will open up like so. Okay. So let me show you in the book again so that you have that visual of what this will look like. But that's basically how you do that. Super simple. So you can see the tie behind the waterfall here. Here is that closure piece. Now, if you wanted to, you could, I didn't do it, um, but you could just glue it on the sides and create another pocket here if you wanted to. Um, but I just glued it shut and I put the photo mat here. And then remember I talked about the spine, you just glue the spine there and then that gives you a place here. It also gives you your um, photo opportunity on the back page too. Now, if you glue it all down, it's not going to hurt anything. You're just going, all you're going to do is lose one, you know, picture spot. But if you do glue it all the way down, which you totally could, totally fine. And you can see how the seam binding is behind there. And then that just closes up and does like that. So that's all you need to do for that page. And then on the front of page three, another library pocket and another photo mat. Okay. So kept that the same. So then the next piece here, let me get this out of the way. Um, the next piece here is the flip. Okay. So it opens up like that and then it opens up like that, um, to create a lot of opportunity. Um, on this page here, what I ended up doing was I cut my pattern paper so here, this was from the same piece of paper. So I cut the strip at five and three eighths inch tall, and then I did two that were three and a half wide, put one here and one here. And then I took the white, or the, excuse me, the natural artisan cardstock, three and a half, um, three and a half wide by five and three eighths. And then I just put that on top and it did cover the edge just a little bit, but that was okay because then you don't have to fuss with different measurements. It just was easier to do it that way. Um, so that's how I covered the pages. And then I just added the flips. Now this flip here, I'll talk about in a second, but you will need to add this one to the page before you put this down and we'll I'll show you that in just a sec. On this page here, it just attaches to the tab after you put your pattern paper on, it just glues to the top and that's it. It just folds over and that's all there is to that. So let's go through that. I'm going to throw things on the floor too, by the way. I don't know if you heard that crash, but that's what that was. So you will need two pieces of paper and um, one is 11 by four and a half and this one is six by four and a half. This one does not require any um, seam binding closures. Let me get that out of the way. Get that out of the way. I'm making a huge mess. I can tell. I'm making a huge mess. Okay. So 11 and a half or 11 by four and a half. We're going to score at five and a half. Okay. And that's just literally all you have to do. Okay. This, once you put the pattern paper on your tab, I just glued the front right to it and that was it. And then you have this piece that opens up and has that nice little flap there. Okay. That's all I did. That's all I did. Um, and then on the other side of that page, then you have your six by five and a half or four and a half, excuse me, six by four and a half. Um, score to half an inch or five and a half, either way. So you have a half inch tab and then you're going to glue or um, glue. You're going to miter your little tab. Get that out of the way. Get this out of the way. Fold the tab here. Okay. And then, so this piece will be on the left hand side I'll grab this book and show you 
All right, so this is what we're looking at here. So it will glue to the top of this tab. And when you open it up, since it's only glued on that other side, then you have the two photo mat opportunities here, okay? So that's this right here. So it will open and then you'll have your flip, okay? Then if we look at this page, so let's, this is the back of that page, right? Now we'll go like this. This you will want to glue down, center it and glue it down before you put this photo mat piece on here, okay? So then that will cover that tab, all right? So glue it down, center it, glue it down so it's nice and flush with the edge, and then go ahead and put this mat on. You can put this piece on as I only did it um, at three and a half, but if you wanna use a whole piece of paper on this piece, then you know just make sure to put your flap down first and then you can cover the tab, okay? I hope that makes sense. That's all I did for that. And then let's see, let's turn the page. This one is the stacked booklet. Now this is kind of done pretty similar to what I did um, the first time. The only difference that I did with this one is I put the seam binding underneath the photo mat on the back side. Um, you can totally put it underneath here. Uh, the other piece is underneath the booklet as it's attached. Um, so you will need a couple pieces for that. So you will again need a four and a quarter by four and a quarter back piece. So that is the brown piece here that attaches to the back inside of the flap there. And then uh, the photo mat is four by four and a quarter by four and a quarter, I believe. Is it four and a quarter? Four by four, excuse me. So this is four and a quarter by four and a quarter and the mat is four by four, okay, the photo mat. And then you have your book pages. So your book pages, let me get this up here for just a second. Oh, it won't stay. It won't stay. So this is a stacked booklet. So you will need one piece that's four by four, and then you will need three pieces that are four and a half by four. On the four and a half side, I'm scoring it four, which gives me a half inch tab on those three pieces. Okay, so on the four and a half, I'm scoring at four. That gives me that half inch piece. So you'll need three of those. You miter all of your corners. Okay, and whoops. Fold your tabs and burnish. I hope this is working for you with the color coding and kind of doing this. I mean, um, I was trying to figure out how to do this and um, do it quickly and so it would make sense. So, <laughs> so you have your, your books here uh, or your little, um, your pages here. Now what you're gonna do is, the first thing you're gonna do is grab your page and you're going to glue this down like so. All right, um, when I glued, I glued the brown part to the back, okay, of the flap. And then you start building onto that. So um, you'll put your page, your first page down, and then you just start stacking on top of them. Now what you're gonna wanna do is the tabs need to be on the top. So we're gonna pretend I glued that down and then you're going to want to glue that first piece down just like that. So that kind of creates that stable backside. And then you notice you have your tab here. So then you will, um, you will add your glue, okay? So we'll go ahead and just do that really fast um, and glue the next page on. And remember, this will all be kind of glued down um, with the tab up like so. And then we glue the next page down, like so, okay? And then the 
top page is just four by four and that just glues onto the top tab. So then that just creates your stacked book. Now, the thing to remember is you do need to put a closure on there, okay? So um, before you glue anything, um, I glued this on the back side that time. You could do it on the underside as well, okay? But just make sure you get your closure pieces down before you glue everything down so that they're in place to close that booklet, okay? And that's all you need to do. Um, so there it is. This one I glued, like I said, on the back, but remember on the first one, I glued it underneath the um, the booklet piece in between the backing um, brown cardstock. So, you know, either way you want to do it, there is no, you know, right or wrong way, whatever you feel like doing at the time. I think I probably ended up doing that because I goofed and started gluing and <laughs> who knows, who knows what I was thinking. But anyway, I just, I can show you that there's two different ways to do that, um, where it wraps around the front or it, you know, is underneath the actual booklet itself. Okay. And again, um, you'll have the backing piece and then you'll have your little stacked booklet that's glued on top. And if I hold this down and pretend it's glued, then it will just open up like this. And there you go. You have your book. All right. And as you open your book, then there you have it. I hope that makes sense. And I think, as I look at this, I might have glued it this way down, because it doesn't really matter. The only thing that does matter is that you're going to use your pattern paper to cover the tab, okay? So if you um, glue it down with this back piece down, then you will have all your pattern papers on the top here, okay? And on the right side, if you glue it like this, you'll have a pattern paper here. And then when you open this up, you'll have your pattern paper or mats over here. So, you know, however you want to do that. And um, some of this I didn't cover on purpose because I wanted the cardstock to show. I hope that makes sense. Um, again, library pocket on the last page. So this is the fifth page so that I could have another photo mat. And then the back page is um, completely um, uh, blank because on the back page, we just cut this tab off and didn't have it. Okay. I... That's the end of the tutorial. Um, this is Attic Antiques Country Craft Creations. And I did use the library card pocket from Elizabeth Craft Designs. I did use the Scrap Diva Designs tabs. Um, I also did use Prima Flowers that were from Country Craft Creations. Um, and I had a couple, uh, obviously, left over. Um, I also did use the buttons and the twines and stuff came from this cute little um, accessory pack that I did find in the store. I don't believe this is online, um, but I used a couple of the things out of that that go with this collection, so I thought that that was fun. And then this is Attic Antiques. This is the paper collection that's absolutely gorgeous. So, um, yeah, I hope this uh, tutorial made sense. Really simple, basic page. Um, tags are all the same. Library pockets are all the same. There's just a couple little fun um, elements with the interactions on the backs of the pages. So um, thanks for watching. I hope that uh, made sense. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Stay crafty, and I will see you again soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.